Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm sharing with you five quick and easy, delicious summer dessert recipes. That is a mouthful. Four out of the five of these are no bake and they're minimal ingredients on most of them, if not all of them. And these are ones that I have shared with you guys before, but it has been a while. Some of these are from the beginning of my channel. So unless you've been here from the start or gone back and watched some of my, some of my old videos, sorry if you've watched them, some of them are a little rough, but I've taken these all together and put them into one video. And if you've seen them before, this will refresh your memory. But anyways, let's get started with these recipes. Okay, up first we have this delicious peaches and cream salad. This is absolutely delicious. I highly recommend it. This recipe calls for a container of Cool Whip and I did not have that, but the recipe says if you wanna make your own, you, should, you need to make a stabilized whipped cream, which I was not familiar with, but they gave uh, directions in the recipe. So I am whipping some heavy whipping cream until I have some soft peaks and I'm just using my hand mixer to achieve that. I think it was one cup of, yeah, one cup of heavy whipping cream. And then we're going to take four ounces of cream cheese, soften to room temperature, add in a third a cup of powdered sugar and one teaspoon of vanilla. You're gonna mix that until it is nice and smooth and you don't have any lumps. And then once it is all combined, you're going to add it to the whipped cream. And apparently, apparently that makes stabilized whipped cream. Now, I don't think mine came out the way it was supposed to because it said that this last step, you're supposed to whip it until it had stiff peaks. And mine just kind of got softer, but it worked. But either way, follow the directions in the recipe or just use a tub of whipped topping. And then I used canned peaches, so I just drained them really well and cut them up. And then we have 32 ounces of vanilla yogurt and one package of vanilla pudding mix. We're gonna mix that together and then we're going to add in the stabilized whipped cream and mix that in well, fold it maybe, um, and then add in the peaches. Now there's some variations you can do. There's some great ideas in the recipe, which once again will be linked down below. You could use um, like a cheesecake flavored pudding mix. You could use peach flavored yogurt. This is a peaches and cream recipe, but of course you could change up the fruit and do your own thing. You could do a strawberries and cream, use some strawberry yogurt, lots of varieties. Once everything was well mixed, you're just going to add in the peaches. And now I did not do a pretty display here because um, I was just making it for ourselves, but you could add some little peaches on top and have an absolutely delicious recipe that is great for your family or to take to a summer picnic. I highly recommend this recipe. So for this next recipe, we are gonna be making a dessert salad. It's a strawberry shortcake fluff salad. Once again, the recipe will, will be listed below for you. Um, I'm gonna also tell you how it came out and what I would do differently. So I've got one can of sweetened condensed milk and then we're gonna add in one container of a whipped topping and we are gonna fold that all together. I do wanna say if you're enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up because that really does help me out. It lets me know you like this video. It lets YouTube know you like this video. And also if you're new and you're not yet subscribed, please consider doing so before you leave. I love sharing grocery hauls and recipes, what's for dinners and some vlogs. So. All right, moving on to the recipe, we got the uh, sweet condensed milk and the whipped topping well combined. We're adding in one bag of mini marshmallows and we're gonna mix this together and you're gonna want a bigger bowl than what I used. I realized really quickly that I was gonna need a bigger bowl. Now I will say, in the end, this recipe came out really, really good. It was a little bit sweet for me. I would probably do less marshmallows um, next time I make it is what I'm thinking I will do. And then we're gonna add do the strawberries. I went to get fresh strawberries and the store I went to had hardly any and they didn't look good. So the recipe said you could also use frozen strawberries. I left mine out kind of to get a little bit thawed. Um, I didn't actually thaw them in the microwave or anything. I just kind of let them defrost like on the counter and I cut them up and I used two bags because I felt like that was equivalent to what the recipe called for. I think it was two pints. So, I feel like there was not enough fruit in this. So I would do more strawberries. Again, you can't really go wrong. You can kind of just adjust it until it looks good and tastes good to you. 
Um, so I would do more strawberries next time. And I had a little bit of this left over after I brought this to my family's for Memorial Day. And with the leftovers, I had some pineapple chunks in the refrigerator and I mixed that in. And that was really good. So you could do um, strawberries and pineapple. I think blueberries would be nice too, which would give you a nice red, white, and blue, you know, themed dessert. That would be good too. So I definitely recommend this recipe. I just wish the ratios were a little bit different, but it might have been my fault for just not putting in enough strawberries in the beginning. So we're just going to mix that all together. We're going to pour that gooey mixture on top of the strawberries and combine that well. Now the recipe says you can do angel food cake or pound cake. This is what I was able to find in my store and it just said to get one loaf of it. Um, it does give instructions too if you want to make your own um, like a box mix. Just read that if you're wanting to do that. So um, I ended up getting the round cake which was more than I really needed for this recipe. So I didn't use the whole thing but I did use about three quarters of it. And I just cut off the edges just because the recipe said that and I think just to keep it pretty. Don't worry, that did not go to waste. I did eat that as I was cleaning up the bowl. <laughs> so no no worries, no waste. Um, and then you're just gonna ch cut that up into chunks and we're going to mix that together. Now this is a recipe that they say you don't wanna make super far in advance because it will get soggy the longer it, it sits. But I made this a few hours before we ate it and it was just fine. And I finished off the little bit of leftovers the next day and it was, it was still delicious. Although you could prep a lot of it ahead of time and just not maybe mix it all together. Anyways, this dessert uh, salad came out really, really good. Again, adjust the ratios if you want, but definitely a winner in my book. So for this next recipe, it is called fruit salad to die for. I am switching it up a little bit. Um, basically just the fruit I'm changing up a little bit, but the recipe calls for pineapple chunks in their own juice. I pulled out some of the pineapple, I think because the can I had was a little bit bigger and I'm adding in some vanilla pudding mix. So the biggest, the most important part is that the vanilla pudding mix needs to be mixed in with some fruit juice in order to get the, I don't know, it's not really a sauce, but that um, puddingy mixture. Um, so the recipe called for mandarin oranges that you would drain um, the green grapes, bananas, strawberries. I just used whatever fruit I had on hand. So I did pineapple, strawberries, blueberries, and then I also added in some green grapes. Um, but I will have the recipe linked down below um, just to kind of give you an idea of the ratios, but really can't go wrong with this. Just make sure the vanilla pudding mix is mixed in with some fruit juice of whatever, whatever kind. Um, you could, I guess, maybe use the mandarin orange juice if you wanted. Um, but if you use multiple canned fruits, just don't use all of the juice for all of them. But this is really, really good. Very much recommend it. You could use whatever fruit you have on hand. And this was delicious and very quick and simple to put together. Let me know if you would try this one. This next dessert is really fun. I don't know where it came from. It may have started with someone in my husband's family. I don't know. Let me know if you've ever seen anything like this, but I've got some graham crackers, some whipped cream, and also some mini chocolate chips. You could also use the tub whipped cream. I think homemade whipped cream would work as well. I'm not sure. Um, and you can use any graham crackers you want. So I have some chocolate ones and some cinnamon ones, but I've also done these with just plain graham crackers and plain whipped cream and no like toppings. But basically we're making mini ice cream sandwiches, but we're using whipped cream instead of ice cream. So you break apart your graham crackers so that you have squares. The ones with sugar on them, like the chocolate and the cinnamon ones, I do end up flipping them over so that the sugar is on the inside. That'll just make it a little bit less messy to eat. And then you just put some whipped cream on top and I'm adding in some mini chocolate chips. You could put in some sprinkles. You could also use some flavored whipped cream if you wanted. But like I said, the plain graham crackers and plain whipped cream is also really good. And then you just close them up like little sandwiches, pop them in the freezer for not very long, maybe like a half an hour. Um, and then you eat them. They're just like little ice cream sandwiches. I mean, obviously you eat them, um, but you can do any variety you want. These are really fun, a nice, um, quick and easy, sweet treat, and a little bit better for you than ice cream sandwiches.
For this next recipe, we're going to make strawberry lemon blondies, and this recipe is delicious. So I'm starting with two cups of unsalted butter that have been softened to room temperature. We're going to add in three quarters cup of granulated sugar and mix that with my hand mixer, creaming it together until it is all nicely combined. Then we're going to add in one large egg and we will go ahead and mix that together as well. Once that is fully incorporated, we want to add in a quarter cup of lemon juice. I don't have a juicer, so I just squeezed it into a measuring cup to measure it and just fished out any seeds or anything that wasn't supposed to be in there. And you're going to add that in. Um, the lemon juice may not completely incorporate at this point, but that is okay. Just mix it best you can. And then we're going to set that to the side and go to our dry ingredients. The recipe words it like this. It says two and one quarter cups of all purpose flour using the fluff scoop level method for measuring. So just to keep it fluffy, we're going to add in a half a teaspoon of baking powder and a half a teaspoon of salt and whisk that together really well. And then we're going to add our dry ingredients to our wet ingredients. This is going to get pretty thick, but we're going to stir that up until that is nice and mixed together and there's no more dry ingredients visible. Then we're going to add in one cup of diced strawberries and gently fold that together. And then in a nine by nine inch square pan, we're going to line it with parchment paper so that we can easily pull these blondies out. I tend to scrunch up my parchment paper first um, and it just seems to help it take shape a little bit better. This dough is thick, so it is take a little bit of time to spread it out. Just do your best to get it spread out as evenly as possible. And then we're gonna bake it in the oven at 350 to, for 30 to 35 minutes until it's just starting to turn golden around the edges and, the, and a toothpick comes out moist, but not wet. So now we are moving on to our glaze and the recipe does give instructions to make this strawberry puree but we're basically mashing up some strawberries, but you can check the recipe for all the instructions there. And we want to use for the glaze, one cup of unsifted powdered sugar, then you wanna sift it. So the weight of it is in one cup unsifted. So hopefully that makes sense. And then I'm just putting these smashed berries into the strainer as well to just get, any of the, get out any of the chunks. And I'm just kind of pressing it down with a spoon to get all of the juices out. So just do the best you can with that. And then we're going to add in about one tablespoon of lemon juice. Once again, I don't have a juicer, so I'm just using my hand to catch any seeds. And you just want to check the texture of the glaze. So you want to mix this until there is no more lumps. If the glaze is too thin, add a little bit more sugar. If it's too thick, you can add a little bit more lemon juice. I got a great consistency there, nice and pourable. And I pulled the blondies out of the pan once it was cool. And we're just spreading this across the top. And yes, don't waste any of the glaze. And we're just gonna spread that over the cooled blondies. And then you're gonna let the glaze set before slicing. It just kind of hardens just a little bit, not like it's hard, but you know, just sets. And these blondies are absolutely delicious. Totally recommend it. Of course, I recommend all of these recipes, but uh, the recipe is down in the description box. This is a great summer treat. It's light and fresh with the strawberries and the lemon. Yeah, absolutely delicious. That's gonna do it for today's video. If you liked this video, once again, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe if you're new. All of the recipes are going to be linked down in the description box. So check them out. I hope that you make them and enjoy them as much as we did. And I'll see you next time. Bye guys.